Henry's cat slowly ate his hamburger and strawberry jelly sandwich as he watched a ventriloquist on television. As Henry's cat had heard all the jokes before, he switched channels and watched a program about the great sights of America, the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building, and the faces of the presidents carved out of a mountain. Just as Henry's cat was being very impressed, Chris Rabbit popped in. Hello, hello, what are you watching? What's that you're watching on the telly? Oh, I was just watching all about America. It's a wonderful place. I'd like to go there. You can have your portrait cut into the side of a mountain. I like that. I wonder how much it costs. That's only for president, silly. You have to be a president before you can have that. Oh, how do you become a president then? I think I'd like to be one of those. It's easy, it's easy. You just have to pass a president's exam. And if you pass, they make you a president. Lots of people do it. Oh, what do you have to know to pass? It's easy. I'll teach you the history of America. I read it on a packet of cornflakes. The first president was George Washington. When he was a little boy, he chopped down an apple tree. And consequently, an apple fell on Isaac Newton's head. And he discovered that apples were full of gravity. Oh, what was Isaac Newton doing in America? He was looking for his relatives, which is how he discovered relativity. Everyone knows that. Then George Washington's father came along and he said, who chopped down the apple tree? And George Washington said, I cannot tell a lie, father, it was me. But he told me to do it. Well, his father was very angry and said, just for that, William Tell will shoot an apple off your head. Well, William Tell came along disguised as a lone ranger and Tonto, who's a friend of William Tell's, put an apple on his head and George Washington said, Shoot, father, I am not afraid. And Tonto shot George Washington's father as he had been asked. Then the lone ranger said, Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, silver. And the seven dwarfs who were just passing thought the lone ranger had found silver. So they sang, Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to dig we go. And they dug and they dug and he didn't find any silver. But they found gold. Well, that started the gold rush and Charlie Chaplin came rushing over to help. They found lots and lots of gold, but then they argued how to share it. So they fought over it and got lots and lots of knocks. And that's why they named piles of gold Fort Knox. <laughs> well, Henry's cat thought this was all very interesting and he wanted to learn more so that he could pass his president's exam. Oh, what happened after the gold rush then? Oh, they made so much money with the gold, they all went to Boston and had a tea party. Cowboys and Indians and everyone. The Indians gave pendants to everyone and they named the day Indian Pendants Day on the 4th of July. Oh, yes, I've heard of Indian Pendants Day. I often wonder what it was for. What happened then? Well, when everyone heard about the gold, they all went west in cover wagons and they had to go through the mountains called the Rockies. Why were they called the Rockies? Because that's where the rock singers come from, of course, silly. Then, when they got over the Rockies, they could see Hollywood, which was the capital of America. Oh, I thought Disneyland was the capital of America. Yes, it was, but that was later. When they got to Hollywood, they found Charlie Chaplin and the Seven Dwarfs had started a film company. Oh, what happened to Snow White? Oh, 
know. She ate an apple full of gravity and couldn't stand up. Well, everyone wanted to become film stars because all the gold had been dug up. And the first 50 actors all became stars and made so much money, they bought up the rest of America between them. Which is why the flag has 50 stars on it. Oh dear, I never knew that. What happened then? Well, someone discovered how to make stars out of drawings. It was a revolutionary thing. In fact, the American Revolution. And led to the war between the real stars and the drawn stars. It was called the American Civilized War. Why civilized? I've never heard of civilized war. Because they didn't use any guns or things like that. They just threw custard tarts and donuts and that sort of thing. Who won? It was a draw. So Disneyland became the capital of the cartoon people and Hollywood for all the others. That is until they discovered the aeroplane. Oh, what happened then? Well, the brothers invented the aeroplane, didn't they? which defied gravity and put all the apple growers out of business. All the apple growers then went to New York for the Big Apple Conference and an old lady stood up and said, Oh, I make lots of apple pies. Why don't we make lots and lots of apple pies and fire them into the sky at the aeroplane to counteract the anti-gravity? It was a great idea! Pie in the sky became the American dream. Oh, that's very interesting. Yes, and everyone lived happily ever after. Can you remember all that? Henry's cat liked the idea of being president even more now that he knew the history of the United States of America. He immediately wrote to the White House, which is in America. Dear sir or madam president, I am ready to take over as president as soon as necessary, if not sooner. Enclosed a photo for my mountain portrait. Love to all, Henry's cat. Then, Henry's cat put the letter in a bottle and threw it into the sea. And got a reply by return post. Dear Henry's cat, <laughs> thank you for offering to be president. We are full up for the moment, but you can come to the next president training course on Tuesday. <laughs> Take care, the president's secretary. Well, Henry's cat was very pleased about that. He immediately packed his bag and put on his best T-shirt and baseball cap and caught a bus to America. at the White House, he gave his letter to the lady who put him in the queue for the president's training course. Then the teacher looked at them all and said, Good day, candidates. You will have to answer a hundred questions about America. <laughs> the one with the highest marks will become the next president, and the one with the lowest marks will become vice president. And the rest of you will get free trips to Siberia during the off-season. Start now! Well, Henry's cat was so sure he was going to win, he started the daydream of all the things he would do when he was president. When people ask me what I've seen and who I've met and where I've been, I tell them with a haughty stare. I've been everywhere. He's been everywhere. Arizona, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Texas, Kansas, Idaho, Michigan, New Mexico, and every Yankee state. I was great. He was great. Oregon, Louisiana, Washington, and Indiana, Mississippi, Tennessee. All I kept to see was me. Folks, I'll tell you straight. I was great. He was great. Not to mention Arkansas, Connecticut, Columbia, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Illinois. Kentucky, Maryland, Massachusetts, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, New Hampshire, New York, North and South Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. In fact, every plastic cotton, big and chromey, plate of processed, have a nice day. You're welcome. We are from the Atlantic to the Pacific. 
I was terrific. He was terrific, and that is being specific. Well, Henry's cat's daydreaming had become real dreaming, and he woke up when he heard a voice saying, Time's up, everyone. Hand in your papers, please. Henry's cat hadn't even started. His chance of being president had gone. He had had the American dream and forgot to wake up. Sadly, he caught the bus home to England. We've just formed a new club, and we've made you the president in absentia, which means while you were away. Oh, that's nice. What's the club all about? Oh, it's to promote good eating everywhere. Our motto is ubiquitous, salubrious, abdominus, which is Latin for everywhere, good eating and big bellies. We call it USA for short. Well, he immediately rose to the situation like a good president should. Oh, well then, what are we waiting for? Let's get eating. They presented Henry's cat with a special cake for the occasion, with his name and everything on. He cut a large slice and became the first president, happy to eat his own words. Henry's, Henry's, you must know Henry's cat. You must have seen the movie. You must have read the book He's a mellow yellow feline So take a second look He knows everything about nothing And not too much about that So if you know someone who knows what he knows Then you must know Henry's cat Then you must know Henry's cat